Hello everyone, welcome to a new declutter video. This is a really exciting one. This is all my craft stash. So I'm actually really looking forward to going through all this. And also welcome down to my basement. I don't know if I've brought you down here before. Down here is where Chris has his office. The kids have a sort of den area. I think the previous owners did convert it into a flat at one point. So this is sort of the kitchen dining area. And I don't know whether I filmed it in a vlog, I can't remember, but last year sometime I decided it was about time I moved my craft things out of my sewing room, which is almost directly above me. Because basically I just had too much and it was getting in the way. And I don't often have time to do crafting as much as I wanted to. So, um, yeah, I, we decided that it would be a better thing to bring it down here. As you can see, <laughs> there's a Christmas tree. Everywhere I go, there seems to be a Christmas tree. So I hope I don't get too much bad luck. When I brought everything down, it was actually fairly organised. It was all in piles around the floor here. But gradually, things have gone on the table. Other people add things to the table as well. As soon as I clear a spot up, people come along and put something in it. But, um, yeah, a bit of organisation to do. So that's going to be this video and I hope you enjoy watching. Right, so I don't know, you probably can't tell but that is a sort of dining room table there which was my intention to sit here and do the craft. Yeah, as you can see we've got stacks and stacks of paper, there is a whole other crate sort of of paper over here. A Christmas tree which has actually been here since the Christmas before last because that's when we had people staying down here. What else do we have? Some more paper bits. Now this, this is a spiral binder machine, I think. We've got some Hessian bags left over from when I made a rustic advent calendar. There's a video on that if you want to find it. In the corner, we've got bubble wrap and boxes, but I don't think I need that much. So I think some of that will be going on free cycle. A clock from my sister, which we need to put a new battery in. Uh, this corner is a bit cobwebby, so I think I'm going to start by getting the hoover. And we've got some coats here that I don't think have been touched for years i mean this one was definitely rains when she was about 10 or 12 so that can definitely be washed and go to a jumble sale that's quite a cool coat actually so down here we've got rain's sewing box that should be in the other room box of pva glue that's always useful this box is my heat embossing box so we've got all the um embossing powders and ink stamps uh also got some ink sprays there that's pretty much that box. This box is paper embellishments. I think I've used that for scrapbooking. I've got a pom-pom maker, which, yeah, those are brilliant. If you want to make pom-poms, get one of those. They're so clever. Lots of Prima paper. Prima, play <laughs> Prima paper flowers, I will say it. Some washi tapes. These are so pretty. And we've got some hole punches as well. Underneath this box, another box of paper. I've got my guillotine a bag of card, I think, mainly. This bag here was the last bits of craft bits I found around the, around my room upstairs. So that is a, a whole load of random stuff that needs sorting through. We've got a sort of folder of just of tissue paper. Chris's hat that must have fallen off one of the hooks. Oh, it's got a bit, a little bit dusty and sadly doesn't fit over his dreadlocks anymore. Okay, behind there we've got a Creopop pen. I did do a video um, of us trying that out a little while ago. My Spellbinders Grand Calibre. I definitely need that less tucked away because I do like using that. Um, if you don't know, that's a sort of gizmo that cuts out patterns out of paper and card. I'm not sure what's in those two boxes i'm not sure if there are anything's in those boxes got a little container of sequins down there this folder is mostly for my embellishments so to give you an example we've got general embellishments and stickers paper shapes charms gothic and weird embellishments words and alphabets that sort of thing okay so now you know what we're dealing with the first thing i'm going to do is well actually i'll just get rid of that christmas tree i'll put that in there to go up in the roof pile upstairs and bring down i've got a chest of drawers upstairs that was originally it might have been originally my dad's actually and then it went in my bedroom and then when we got our first house it went in rain's bedroom and we've just kept it it's a good quality solid wood chest of drawers i painted it purple and decoupaged um, some flower fairies on it and as you can imagine Rain and Jude have sort of grown out of that design, that sort of style now. 
So I thought I would bring it down here. It's currently in the narrow room upstairs where I keep my fabric. I think it would be better utilised down here. So that's the chest of drawers I was talking about. Just got a few things to move out the way before I can get it out of the room. gonna do is put in my papers as you can see over here things get put on top like Christmas trees which I still need to take upstairs it ends up all bent over which isn't good so I'm gonna see if I can fit the paper in or I might just stack it flat on top I'm not sure <music> this task and I'm getting there but I'm at that really annoying stage where things are sort of looking worse before they look better. I'm quite pleased with the progress I've made but I do need some more storage. I, I knew I wasn't gonna have enough but I was sort of hopeful that I might sort of be able to get around it but I'm not going to. So the chest of drawers is full but this oops, plastic case that's now empty and the contents is in there which will make it a lot easier to to see what it is that I'm looking for and what bits I've got. Very, very impressed with this. And you can imagine how heavy these are all just stacks of paper. So that is doing well, that rack. This is my box of stuff I'm going to get rid of. Either I'm going to just stick on eBay as one big job lot or I might pick out some of my nicer papers and embellishments and do some sort of inspiration packs to sell I'm not sure yet yeah so I still not found a home yet for my stamping and heating bet heating bossing stuff and just just a few bits and pieces that I've just run out of room for like I couldn't fit these butterflies in the drawers so they've got nowhere to go at the moment and this box here I'm dithering about because it's all my card making stuff and I've kind of decided that I don't really have time to hand made my cards anymore. Maybe that's just one thing that I could sort of ease up the pressure on myself time-wise and buy cards. So I'm wondering what to do with with this, whether to resell it, go through. There'll be some things there that I can use for my scrapbooking. I'm not going to stop. I really love making, I say scrapbooking, like making guest books and junk journals and, and that sort of thing. So I expect there'll be some papers and cards I can use for that. This box here, as I've been clearing through, this is also card making things. Maybe I'll just do one last couple of full on days making a load of cards for my family for the next few years. So I've got a stash of them ready to go. Maybe that's the thing to do. Well, the storage rack that I've bought um, is not arriving till Wednesday, annoyingly. Today is Friday. So I'm just gonna have to sort of abandon this, which is a shame. Oh, actually, I'm not gonna be able to abandon it because June's got a friend coming on Monday and they want to go in the den so I will need to at least clear the corridor space to get so they can get past but yeah I'm just going to sort of carry this on later in the week which is really annoying I just wanted to get it done it's annoying that furniture is so expensive I looked in Argos today to buy something I thought oh yeah I have an Argos up the road I could just come home with some furniture and I can bring myself to pay £50 for the a basket rack no, so I've got a cheapy plastic thing coming from Amazon and I hope it's going to be alright. 
Hello, I'm back and this time I am armed with this stack of plastic crepe. I thought they were gonna be drawers actually from the from how they looked, but I think they just literally stack on top of each other. But I'm gonna make the most of sort of the height here. I think I'm gonna put them in this corner and I'm hopeful that this will be enough storage for everything else that I need it for. Fingers crossed. <laughs> To you it's only been a second since I was last here, but for me it's been a couple of weeks, possibly a couple of months. <laughs> the reason why I sort of got to a standstill was I just needed more storage and furniture is so expensive, isn't it? So I've just been sort of waiting around for something to come along locally that I could buy second hand and it did. I got something off eBay and here it is. You can just about see it by the stack of paper. This blue cupboard that's like from the 1940s. Bought it from eBay, but it turns out it's just from a furniture shop up the road that I didn't even know was theirs. I was very pleased to find that. It was only 10 pounds, along with a chest of drawers, which I'm gonna use elsewhere in the house. Oh my gosh, I've just seen the spiders. So now I've got that, I can get started again. I have to be honest, it's a little bit bigger than I wanted and this table now comes right out into the space in the cellar and it's going to be really difficult to people, for people to get past and it means if I want to use the table I will have to pull it out so it also means we will have to keep that table clear otherwise it will be too heavy so it's not perfect but you know beggars can't be choosers and I'm going to be able to fit in a hell of a lot of stuff in that cupboard and drawers it's like two cupboards at the bottom I don't know if you can quite tell and two drawers at the top. It also means this wire unit that's just in shot that was there. I'm now gonna have to sort of create a space. There's a sort of nook here in front of me that um, currently has a blow up air bed for guests at Christmas, some coat hangers for my clothing business and other tools and bits and pieces. So I'll have to clear that out the way to make space for that there. But at least I can crack on. So that's what I'm doing today. Wish me luck. Hello, we have ventured upstairs to my sewing room which is where all my craft stuff used to be because <laughs> I would like to get rid of my pyrography things from in here as well because that was really spread around. I had some of it upstairs in the guest room and that stuff I've taken down to the cellar. By the way, do you say cellar or basement? Let me know. Is there a difference? I don't know. I've got a great big plastic tub here in this cupboard with a lot of my things that are waiting to be pyrographed. Downstairs I've already taken down some of the things that have been pyrographed and are for sale currently on my Etsy shop which is by Helen Hobden by the way. But I'd like to get it all together and I thought well that should probably fit in the cupboard and then I looked under the desk and remembered I had all this. Here's my desk and then underneath it we have here but this box is actually all cardboard frames and I picked these up quite cheaply off eBay from a closing down shop but I thought I could frame some of my paintings or pyrography pictures um so I went and got those and there's a lot more than I realized um that continues in this box underneath as well by the way and then over here that file isn't relevant either that's just full of old pictures and things Oh, I've got a craft catalogue that can go and be recycled, that's out of date now. And then I've got a stack of exercise books which were waiting to be decorated and with a pyrographed title on the front. So I kind of think that that should go downstairs as well. What's that behind it? Um, that is photography magazines and I've got some and the CDs to go with them. There's more notebooks down here, the red ones and the green ones. And then this cupboard here. This is all sort of crafty bits and pieces. And then underneath is just a big old piled up mess of, yeah, mostly pyrography things. 
a set of money boxes that are waiting for me to decorate. And here we've got wooden jewellery boxes, a pack of silver birch hearts. I don't know, I think I'm actually going to take this whole tub down and keep that stuff in it but obviously I will sort some of it out as well and what was in this space a couple of years ago I made a dress out of paper it was before my YouTube days but I have written a blog about it so you can see all the photos of the process so I'll link that below but anyway it was in conjunction with a bookshop called Book Barn which is near us and uh, they let us just collect some books to cut up and use but these are some of the books that I've still got I'll take those down and this is all the pieces of paper from inside books, mostly about Borneo for some reason. <laughs> anyway, that's going to all go in recycling. These hardback books I'm, I'm planning on recovering and turning into journals or scrapbooks. actually finished this. So obviously this is not the prettiest craft room tour you'll ever see on YouTube. For a sort of shabby chicy, very pretty look, I actually have a Pinterest board which I will link to below because I think you'll really like seeing what I like. But this is what I could do with the sort of time and the funds that I have at the moment and the space obviously. It used to fit in my sewing room. We all know what craft supplies are like, they tend to multiply without even looking. I worried this video has gone on for ages so I'm going to just give you a very quick tour to show you what I've done and where I've put everything. Oh before I show you around, people don't believe me when I say I've had a clear out. <laughs> So I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm getting rid of. We have a general carrier bag full of general rubbish. Another carrier bag of rubbish. Other bags of rubbish have already gone out, by the way. A cardboard box of collapsed cardboard boxes ready to recycle. And this is the stuff that I've sort of decided I'm probably not going to use. So we've got some papers, things more on the card making side of things that I don't think I'm likely to use and just stuff that doesn't match my style. I generally go for a vintage look. So there we are, I did get rid of some things. So I used the, the coat racks here to hang, hang off my painting mugs. <laughs> but here's the plastic storage unit I bought. On the top shelf are just sort of bits and pieces that didn't really belong anywhere else. The second one down is hole punches and glue mainly. Next one down is embellishments, mainly floral, some butterflies and some washi tape. Next one, I've got uh, paper mache boxes that are waiting for me to cover, a little notebook that's waiting for me to cover and some ink for stamping, which so uh, that one's a little bit random, I have to admit. Next one down is stamps. I've got some paperwork here because I use that to clean the stamps off. Acrylic stamp collection on this side and a few wooden stamps on here and that little box has got some stamps in as well. And on the bottom shelf is just wooden stamps. Over here on the right, this box here has my heat gun, some walnut ink sprays, but mainly it is embossing powders in there. And below that is my Spellbinders Grand Calibre a cutting and embossing machine. And then underneath we have the chest of drawers I showed you. So let's go through the drawers quickly. Top drawer is pieces of paper, little scraps of paper and bits and bits and bobs that get cut off the edges. Second drawer is embellishments. We've got alphabets here. We've got charms mainly here. And on this side is all tags. Tags and things to tie the tags with. Okay, next drawer, we have a few collections of embellishments. So we've got flower fairy things over here and underneath that little set is like floral embellishments. Um, this side we've got some fairy tale embellishments and a bit of a Halloween collection going on at the back there. In the bottom here we've got collections of more collections of embellishments. We've got all floral stuff here general vintage in this one, travel vintage in this one, 
I think it's all travelly vintage stuff underneath. And then we've just got sort of general st stickers and things over here. And I realised I didn't just sort of pull back and let you see the whole thing. There's the table completely clear and the cat giving me a very strange look. So obviously, as you can see, the table is pushed right up against the cupboard. But I've put the things in the cupboard that I don't need to get to that often. But now that I've got the table completely clear, I can pull it out. This box here is all my pyrography things that I have not decorated yet. The two wooden boxes here are my pyrography things that I have decorated and are ready to sell. And also up here, gosh, the, sorry about the strange light, I've got my big guillotine which is so useful. And underneath is a notebook maker or a, like a pamphlet maker that I've never used but it was from an office clear out and they were just throwing it away so I nabbed that. Okay this is what's so good about this, these solid drawers. There's no way I'd get this sort of paper in an Ikea bit of furniture. Yes it's quite a heavy and well filled drawer. This is all my 12 by 12 paper and 8 by 8 paper. I'm really quite glad to get that flat and I've tried to keep it like pretty wedding suitable papers on the left and vintage and steampunky papers on the right. Right next drawer down I've got a box of envelopes here and a box of cards and card making kits and yeah basically stuff suitable for card making here. I'm still debating with myself as to whether just to get rid of all of that and never make a card again because I don't have time for card making but I like it. And then over here we've got partly made notebooks and scrapbooks. I've already covered that one. I've done the cover and some of the papers for that one but I haven't I haven't attached it all together. I've got some other vin you know antique looking papers that I've done there. A notebook waiting to be done. A folder full of partly done pages. I think that's for an Alice in Wonderland guest book. Underneath I've got a selection of stuff suitable for Halloween or sort of a gothic-y guest book. So those are sort of all in the works. Okay, in the cupboard, this is my sort of collection of papers and bits of cardboard and things that I'm just collecting to put together pages for, for guest books and scrapbooks really. Plenty of cereal boxes here flattened for the cardboard. I've got a map book, I've got a bag of old sewing patterns. Then on this side I've just got a ton of tissue paper. On the next shelf we have all of those notebooks that are waiting to be covered and then I've got those frames which I've laid on, some of them I've laid on their sides, those frames and like backing boards. Some of them are still in this box here and then some of them are also in that box there. Didn't quite realise quite how many of these I had. This is my Christmas section. This box is full of Christmas embellishments and see, you can see some sequins through there. And then this side here, those are those books that I had left over from making a dress out of paper. So that's all that. I had that wire rack in that space. I've just cleared a space and moved it over to this side. So that's quite accessible and easy to get to because this will be the thing that I use all the time. So that's everything. I hope you enjoyed looking around and seeing my great big sort out. I am so happy this is done because of course, if things are difficult to get to, you never get around to doing them. Now it's all sorted and ready and the table is clear. If I fancy doing it a crafty project, I can just come down here in the basement and get on with it. I don't need to struggle with finding bits all over the house. It's all here, all together. So I'm really excited about that. And I will definitely be posting any crafty things that I get up to, I will be posting on this channel. So if you like that sort of content, please hit subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. And if you enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you again next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.